She betrayed our nation. The president's widow married a foreigner. America is shocked. Jacqueline pushed aside a pack of newspapers and took off her wedding ring. Just yesterday, Airy put it on the finger of President Kennedy's widow. Such a valuable 40-carat diamond should have been kept in a bank safe, Jacqueline immediately decided. We are very happy, Anas has told reporters the day before, and in Jacqueline's ears was her sister's mournful cry. How could you, Jackie? Patrick, Patrick, Patrick. She could only think of him. The baby died on August 9, 1963, and the sobbing mother was afraid to be left alone. In addition, it was urgently necessary to start his duties, giving interviews, smiling, helping John F. Kennedy in his new election campaign. A month later, Jacqueline had an expected breakdown, and then her sister decisively told the president, Jackie needs a rest. She's coming with me. Lee Radziwill took her sister on a Mediterranean cruise. The yacht was called Christina O and belonged to billionaire Aristotle Onassis. 99 meters of luxury, a team of 35 people. But most importantly, it was possible to switch there. Jackie looked at the waves of the sea. The sun burned her skin, but she began to breathe freely again. She hastily wiped the first smile from her lips. How could she laugh now? But Lai shook her head. That's what we came here for. It was not customary to say this out loud, but everyone guessed. Lee, the wife of a Polish prince, is in love with Ari Onassis. He could be liked. He retained a brutal charm. He made sharp jokes and how he looked at a woman. If Onassis set out to win someone's heart, he spared neither time nor money. He seemed to be throwing the whole world at his feet. Many fell for these tricks. Lee was so impressed that she was ready to leave her rad's will until her mother besieged her. Do you understand how this will affect your sister? Will you take it all to the White House? Don't you dare. That cruise helped Jackie gather strength. At parting, Ari gave each of the sisters a gift, a piece of jewelry. Jacqueline didn't have time to try on the bracelet, and then it was too late. John is dead, and the light faded for her. I don't have anything else, she mouthed as she walked down the steps of the White House. Then she just disappeared. Jacqueline appeared at memorial events, but was never seen anywhere else. Journalists speculated, is it broken? Drowned your sadness in a glass? However, it was not customary to talk about it then. The widow of President Kennedy was considered a sacred figure. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, living to living. When the phone rang, and it turned out to be Onassis, Jackie did not immediately pick up the phone. But he called back. He spoke warmly, simply, without unnecessary high-sounding phrases, how tired Jacqueline was of them. He offered to meet and just chat. Like that time on the yacht. It was said that Jackie had no money left at all. That the contents that were allocated to her as the widow of the president diverged at one point. The security was expensive, plus the staff, plus, what's to be honest, wardrobe expenses. She bought and bought. She liked beautiful outfits, but it wasn't just that. As some people jammed their feelings, so Jackie treated mental wounds with shopping. The packages multiplied, and the money melted away. It was claimed that Airy had thought out this ambitious project, to marry the widow of President Kennedy, to the smallest detail. That Jacqueline was a valuable trophy for him, the main prize. After all, at that time, she was considered one of the most famous women on the planet. But whatever his reasons, Airy did the most important thing for Jacqueline. He pulled her out of her shell. The meeting took place. And then events began to develop so feverishly that it became obvious that everything was going to the wedding. But there were nuances, Lee's feelings and future presidential elections. Now Robert Kennedy was running. Did she know about Maria Callas? Of course, it was simply unrealistic not to know. Lee Radswill said about it this way. Airy convinced Jackie that Maria was long in the past. Besides, they had nothing in common except their former love. Although Maria was Greek, Airy never married her. Robert Kennedy's death was a bolt from the blue. She has just come to her senses, and everything is new. Something dark is weighing on this family, Jackie said. The second of the Kennedy clan and she has children. And Aries' soft voice on the phone. There are 75 guards on my island. I have my own airline. If you want to, no one will even dare to approach you and the children. That solved everything. 
the wedding was scheduled. Lee rushed to Greece almost as soon as the engagement became known. How could you, Jackie? She shouted and froze. Jacqueline's face was glowing with happiness. You know I need it, Jackie replied. Yes, Lee replied in a strangled voice. I know. On October 20, 1968, Jacqueline Kennedy added another Onassis to her surname. Her sister, Lee Rad's Will, stood behind her during the ceremony. Both were smiling, both looked great. A ring with a 40-carat diamond was dragging his hand. Aries showed himself here. There, on the Greek island of the billionaire, relatives and friends gathered. Jacqueline's children were among the guests. Then there was a wedding reception on board the yacht. The newspaper headlines in the States were relentless. Jackie betrayed the president's memory. How could you, Jackie? No one could believe what had happened. Kennedy's widow got married to a Greek billionaire 23 years older than herself. She was supposed to be locked up in a high tower forever, and she showed herself to be just a woman. Jackie's turned around in full force here. In her raids on the most fashionable and expensive stores, she was able to buy up things and luxury items in the form of furs and jewelry in whole departments. Moreover, only so that all this would not be unpacked later and gather dust at home for years, so that even the super-rich Onassis clutched at his heart. And then she also squandered huge sums in the parties she organized, justifying her title of style icon, assigned to her by the newspapers, and without paying any attention to the aging and increasingly ill husband. Onassis was finally crushed by the death of his son, Alexander's hair in a plane crash, and Callis's only pregnancy, when she wanted to give birth to a child to her beloved, was interrupted at his categorical insistence. And now Aristotle practically died in Mary's arms in Paris, on March 15, 1975. Where was Jackie? In New York, once again burning through life. However, she immediately ordered a collection of mourning dresses from Valentino, in which she later looked very impressive at the memorial dinner and at the funeral itself. So Anas's reasoning about image a few years ago was quite fair. That's how this love story ended.